go. This is Deontay DeBron from a while, the WBC heavyweight champion of the world. And I'd like to give a big shout out to CJ Goodfellow from Sports TV. Bomb Squad, baby. All right, man, let's talk about, uh, I heard I was watching Mike on Sports, and he had played the clip from uh, the State of Boxing, I think it's Max Kellerman show, uh, on ESPN, and he said that, uh, Max, Max, Mike Covinger said that he heard that Jamal Charlo and Canelo Alvarez are negotiating. He said that he believed, and this is his opinion, he's an insider, he said he would believe that we get Charlo and Canelo more likely than... Uh, Canelo jumping up and fighting Lago Macabu. Okay. Um, and I'll tell you what I heard this morning too. But just thinking about let's talk about it. Check out the box from the playlist. And, and I told y'all that's what I've been hearing since around like for a while. And I since around the plant fight, I heard that if plan that beat uh, Charlo, excuse me, they killing me. If the plan had beat Charlo, Charlo, I mean, if plan had beat Canelo, Charlo and, and, uh, and plant was next. But we know that didn't happen. We knew that wasn't going to happen, okay? Then, you know, you start hearing that Canelo might fight uh, Charlo after his performance with Montiel. Heard he said he think he can get him. So I guess he didn't really truly believe he can beat Jamal Charlo, which, you know, after I seen the Corbin fight, I thought you can beat him. But then again, Canelo and the Southpaw, Southpaw give Jamal Charlo issues. Um, you know, so they, they tend to give him more issues than not. But uh, let's talk about it, man. I got the grizzly going. I let my hair grow, man. But now nah, I chop it off. I should tend to curl up when I let it get long. You know, we call this the grizzly. Get the grizzly out here. It's cold. You need that hair on your head regardless. But, uh, but yeah, I mean, yeah, I mean, I told y'all I've been hearing Charlo and Canelo. I ain't surprised, but I told y'all I've been, I've been hearing that, man. And that's what's been going around since, you know, right around the middle of last year. I've been, I've been hearing that, man. So, yeah, I'm not surprised by it one bit. Um, honestly, I, I heard that he said after the Montiel fight, he felt very confident as him as an opponent. I mean, at the end of the day, you hear rumors about him, Jamal Charlo not training for the Montiel fight. I don't know if he take it for a grain of salt. Maybe they letting it get to their head. What they, what Brand Nubia said, don't let it get to your head now. You know what I'm saying? So, you know, when you ain't challenging, when you keep challenging fighters when they fear opponent, when you keep challenging fighters and when they fear your opponents, and you can't get them to big fights. And it ain't no challenge no more. You know, you got to think too, like, you know, why am I training hard and keep my conditioning high knowing I, a guy I probably can get out there in like four, five, six, seven, eight, or, you know, right before the championship rounds, you know, nine rounds. Why am I fighting a guy I know I can get out of here in like, you know, from one and nine rounds? Why am I training hard? And, you know, that's part, you know, of that process when you can't get those, the fights that you want or you're not willing to take on the tough fights that you need, and that's been Jamal Charlo ever, ever since he's been at 60. And some of these fights been sneaking on, up on him, and he ain't been, you know, challenged. He ain't been training. You could tell. You don't need no inside expertise to know that. He ain't been training. He ain't been, you know, doing that because he feel like he ain't been challenged. You see in the quarterback fight, he didn't have no real game plan. His game plan was going there and take punches. You know, so like I said, he ain't really been training to his full opponent. Then it also happens too. When you, when you challenge yourself and inferior your opponents, you don't want to fight the Demetrius Andrades and so on of the world. What else happens? You know, you don't you don't really get the, you know, maximize your potential. You you start to flatline. So if your opponent, you you fight the inferior opponents, you're not training hard, you're not getting better, you know, you're not sparring hard, nigga training at the crib with the family and the wife and the kids. You know, of course he's not gonna be focused. Now the drinking and shit that come with boxing, man, some of the greatest fighters. Have had alcohol and drug substance control, uh, drug abuse. Some of the greatest fighters. Did they age all of them age out good? No. And some of them had damn good long careers. So I don't really care about the alcohol and the shit, man. He did the live stream. We talked about it yesterday and a couple, you know, a couple lives ago that he was calling out Boo Boo and his boy in the background said, I know you lying. So his own people don't believe he's gonna fight Demetrius Andrade if you if you listen close enough. But him and Canelo, like I said before. The thing about it is you can't start your motor. When you get in your 30s or get a little bit up, you can't start the motor when you want to start it. You know, sometimes you got to let that motherfucker run a little bit before, especially like it's cold out here, you got to let it run before you really start, you know, doing your thing. And right now, he ain't ramped that motor up like he used to ramp it up because he don't feel like he's being challenged. And even after the core bar fight, you know, even after the core bar fight, he, he still didn't step it up. He still kept overlooking his opponent. So, like I said before, he, you know, this is what he wants is the Canelo fight. 
And the question is, can he turn that switch on and off like he think he can turn it on and off? And I don't think he can. Trump and down, I don't think you can turn that switch. You ain't. You should have fought Demetrius Zandra to prepare. You ain't never fought on a big stage like this before. Neither had Caleb Plant. And I feel that you more prepared, more prepared than Caleb Plant. And this is why probably Charlo going around saying that he's the best at 68. He said he's the biggest hundred super middleweight in the world. So I told y'all rumors about him moving up. So this don't surprise me. Me and Coverage are been hearing the same shit. You know, we've been hearing the same stuff. He got great sources. I know I got really good sources, great sources. So, I mean, it is what it is, bro. Now, they fight at Houston, the Minute Maid Park, San Antonio, Dallas, Vegas. Who knows? But this dude think he can turn that switch on, man. I remember when I was in my 20s, I used to go out there. I could drink all night, wake up, and, and go hit, hit the weights and, and run and get them, put them miles in. Right now, hell no, nah, man. Take a minute. You know what I'm saying? Stretch a little bit. Put some water in my body, you know what I'm saying? You know, so you know, I'm in rights to heal from injuries quick. Not the case no more. So he think he can he think he can switch that, he think he can switch that light switch on and off. I'm here to tell you he might not. That's why the Andre fight was so important to get this point. Then when he go in there and if he lose or when he get his ass kicked or he get robbed, then he gonna be calling for Demetrius Andre. If I'm Andre, I hold I hold my kahunas on him. Straight up and down. I, I hold my kahunas on him, bro. I don't care how desperate I am for a fight, man. We could have been fought and the winner could have been got Canelo. But you sat around waiting for Canelo fight and you ain't even prepared. You ain't even prepared, bro. You ain't even took a fight at 68. You know what I'm saying? You ain't fought a Benavidez or Andrade or Triple G. You know what I'm saying? You know, you ain't fought guys like that. Caleb Plant, you gonna go into Canelo fight? And your last performance has been looking like shit, man. You ain't stopped Brandon Adam. This nigga ain't been training. Now, maybe he can't have a really good, excellent uh, training camp. He's saying like he's training right now. And Coppinger said on the audio I heard on Michael Sports on the uh, episode of State of Boxing. Gotta be the last one. Come on, ESPN. You probably find it on uh, some clips on uh, YouTube. He said it's going to be on Cinco de Mayo. So he said, you know, even, you know, he basically put the, he told the cautionary star, st tale of Roy Jones Jr. moving up to 100 and, uh, Roy Jones Jr. moving up to 168 pounds and uh and getting, and getting manhandled. You know, and like I said before, uh, you know, because he jumped up to excuse me, he jumped up to middle uh heavyweight. He jumped up to heavyweight, bro. He came back down and didn't look the same. He said, you know, he don't really think Canelo gonna take that risk. So I hear Canelo fighting him. If you don't fight him, he's going after, you know. Joe Smith Jr. for the 175 pound belt, but Cobb just said he leaned towards him fighting Canelo. So it's a lot of things that, that I'm hearing. I heard that he was he, if he didn't get the McAboo fight, and he was gonna try to challenge Joe Smith Jr. for 175 pound belt. Bob Aram said that's so, oh no, I heard he's going for undisputed. Guess he's gonna fight with Turbia. We already know he's gonna pay better BF off. So I don't know, like I said before, I just here to bring the news. He fight Charlo, that's a fight that I would entertain to go going to. But Charlo ain't progressed because he ain't fought the right guys. And then nigga stopped training because he stopped getting challenged. Now, was his and him and Ronnie Shields' decision not to fight Demetrius Andre? Or was it Al Heyman's decision? Whatever you may say, that decision might hurt them in the long run. You need guys like Andrade and Triple G and Murata. They should have been trying to fight Murata. And then try to fight Eubanks. Eubanks signed with somebody else. You need those guys. You need those guys to take you to the next level. You feel me? You need them guys to, to raise your game. You know, you need you need those type of those type of opponents. You need them. It's an ass in there. Yeah. You need those type of opponents, and him not challenging himself, it's gonna, it might hurt him in this type of shit. Now, as far as the fight. Niggas get in with Canelo and forget how to punch him. Caleb Plant didn't even feel a punch and he started he started giving up ground. We know Charlo can take a shot, but we know Charlo's susceptible to a body shot because he stopped fucking training. But usually you got a good chin, you always go to the body. Take the legs away and then make him a sin target. So, you know, like I said, before I start Canelo win this fight, I'm pulling for Jamal Charlo. But I got to put my boxing hat on. And I could be wrong. But, you know, like I said before, people get in there Forget how to fight Canelo, act like he had an elusive target to hit. 
did it. Just go to his body. The chest don't move. Hit the shoulder plex. Keep using your jab. Touch the body. Nigga ain't all that at all. At all. But when you talk about the judges, you know, when you talk about the judges and, and, and the commission on this side and the robberies and all that shit, it, you got to fight with urgency. You got to fight to knock him out. If you can't knock him out, you're not going to win. And the question is, can Charlo, Charlo Power disappear at 160? Will it reappear at 68? Or will he train harder than will he punch harder? If he can't, if he can't knock Canelo out or knock him down if he tank don't lose. But he seemed to be able, he seemed to be able, unlike the last few opponents, he seemed to be able to go past the fence. He seemed to be able to go past the fence and he seemed, he seemed to be willing to take punishment. So he seemed to willing to be able to be able to get in there. He seemed willing to be able to get in there and, to, and take the shot. You know, the question is, can Canelo can Canelo be able to willing to take a shot and can Charlo take his shot? If Charlo can take his shot and do it in a strategic way and do what I say, touch the body, you know, close that gap and make Canelo fight a full three minute, twelve, three minute rounds or twelve rounds, he probably win. We seen versus Golovkin was the last part. Golovkin didn't go past the fence. He was scared to get hit. But if Charlo really can take a shot, bro, it dude ain't that hard to beat, bro. Billy Joe and Kayla Plant had success. I'm telling y'all, he ain't that hard to hit. I tell you that right now, he ain't that hard to hit, bro. He ain't that hard to hit, man. You gotta just. You got to really bring a jab to the table. You really just got to, you know, don't sit there and box them because you can't beat them that way. They're going to rob you. You got to sit there and close the gap. Come behind your jab, touch the body, push him. You got to make him fight at your pace. Once you let him fight and hawk you down and fight when he want to fight, bro, and then all of a sudden this nigga hitting all hard and shit like, bruh. Like I said before, man, they, you know, they make it seem like they got an uphill battle, but in my opinion, now, they make this shit hard. He's a talented joker, man. He's a good fighter. You know what I'm saying? But you got to remember, he's a plotter. He has to be set to punch in. He winds up. Just touch him. Pow, pow, pow. Get out the way. Keep your hands up. But use your angles. Guys like him, man, look at how Roy Jones defused James Tony. Even though James had a weight issue, fine. Look how he defused James Tony. Angles. Improv shots. Shots that you can't, like, really prepare for. Use the angles. Slip, turn, turn him like Jamel would be like as far as footwork, man. Jamel, like the old Jamel would be, could do that, but you got to mix in the aggression. And Charlo don't have Jamal don't have the best feet. He kind of little heavy, but dude, he just gotta. You gotta just th throw shots, bro. You, if you if you step up the pace, he can't fight at a high pace. Control the pace, you control Canelo Alvarez. Might still lose and get robbed. But that's how you that's how you fight him. You control the pace. You look at Mayweather, he set the pace. He set the tone. Like you go right to Canelo Alvarez. That's how you go. You go right to him. You let him know what time it is. That's how you do that shit. You go right to him. Put your socks together. I'm trying to tell people, bro. You press him. All that boxing and shit, man. You gotta get that nigga's respect. You go, you, you went right up to him, you set the tone. You know, he might take a shot. He's going to get hit. But he got to wind up. He tips you. His feet and his punches tip you when he punches. He winds up and he got to be set. That's how Mayweather did it, bro. Everybody looking at the punches Mayweather threw. Mayweather knew he had to have a certain amount of balance to be set. None of his feet being set. You know what I'm saying? He knew if I, if I come towards him, he has to really... Get his balance against. So if I push him back and his weight is back here, he can't punch or be effective punching that way. You know what I'm saying? But if I, you know, if he get here and he set up, he's dangerous and he wind up. So he he tips you off several times. He tips you off several times. You know, and people don't they don't they don't know what they're doing. I just let you know. There's a there's a lot of uh, there's a lot of game being lost in boxing, bro. A tremendous amount. 
So yeah, man, like I said before, man, they make it seem like it's a tough, it's tough. And like I said before, man, when these dudes agree to Canelo stipulations, dude, when they agree to Canelo stipulations, I think uh, that's, that's a handshake agreement. That's a handshake agreement to say that I know what I'm supposed to do is lay down and not get a full effort. And I'm supposed to come here to lose. That's just my opinion on it. When these dudes, you know, agree to rehydration clause and this, that, and the third, I think that's a handshake agreement to know that I need to lay down. Just my, just my opinion, bro. Just my humble opinion. I think it's a handshake agreement to know that I'm supposed to lay down. You know? I know I'm supposed to get in here and I'm supposed to lay down. Nothing more, nothing less. But to beat them, bro, you gotta, you got them. You know, that's the number one thing. You gotta set the pace. Once you set the pace, it's hard to break it. You gotta set the pace. I mean, you gotta be in good condition. You gotta set the pace. You get in there and you set the pace. You know, then you know, you know, his 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 weight has to be, his feet has to be set, and his weight has to be balanced for him to punch. He gonna wind up. Dog, he, he's not, he's not unbeatable. I promise y'all, he not unbeatable. This is, this is, this is not, this is, you're not fighting a dude who's unstoppable, bro. So many flaws that he made. But these dudes make these handshake agreements to come in there, to come in there and, 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 and lay down. But other than that, I might speak on, I might spit on this uh, live tonight or in the afternoon. Let me know what you girls and guys think. You can find me on Twitter, Facebook, Instagram. If you have a business question, inquiry, response, your video quest. All my social media links in the description. Twitter's the fastest way to Facebook and Instagram. If you have a business question, cry, response, or video quest, hit me up. Want to make a financial donation? Uh, cash app, dollar sign, CJ Good 313. Uh, that's in the description. The username, Venmo, CJ Good 313. Username there. PayPal link in the description. All my social media, either usernames to Cash App and Venmo or PayPal links. All them links in the description or usernames. Best way to donate, thumbs up the video, comment, share the video. Next to the uh, subscribe button, subscribe to the channel. The subscribe button the bell icon button. Hit all notifications, Christians, and notifications, people. Hey you, yeah, I'm talking to you. You right there watching this video, waiting for this live stream to start, or just watching the membership video, man, and why you should join the membership. Let's talk about it real quick, expeditiously. Um, we got the three levels, we got the rookie level, we got loyalty badges, you got custom emoji badges, and you have members on the live stream. As we get more people flowing in uh, to join the membership, I have members only live chat. That means everybody can see the video, they wanna see the video. But only members would be able to check. That's three dollars a rookie. Dog star, you get personal shout outs before the videos, maybe after the video, mostly likely before the videos. Um, you give a priority to reply in the chat. Uh, so as soon as I see you, I reply before anybody else. Get early access to pretty much all my non boxing videos. Um, there, ten dollars a month. Then we got the boxing pound for pound superstar for all my boxing boys and, and gals out there. Get early access to prediction and most of our boxing content virtual video collaborations and open debate so you know if you want to pre-record or go live and debate me for a whole video you got you got early access to new videos some of the videos in the all-stars world too and priority reply in the comments so i see in the comments you get priority reply you no know, instantly that's 20 dollars a month so uh let me know what you guys do what you think don't have a patreon no more so here's where you're gonna get some of that exclusive content i used to have on the patreon peace